Hi, my name is Tim Martin, and we're here in Luxor, Egypt. It's the center of one of the great sculpture-loving cultures in the world. For the last 4,000 years, they've developed a sculptural language that is incredibly rich and complex. It includes sculpture in the round, relief sculpture, sculpture related to architecture, and a kind of pictorial low-relief carving. It's a very, very rich language. And we're here to find out what's happening to it today. Now, if we call this year zero, then all the way back there, stretching 2,000 years, marks the tradition of Egyptian sculpture. But here at year zero, the Romans come. This is the age of Anthony and Cleopatra. So from the year zero, up to around 350, 400, we have the arrival of Christianity. But their sculptural tradition was taken from Byzantine Greece and was very different from the Egyptian tradition. So from about 400 up to around the year 700, we have the arrival of Islam. But Islam was an iconoclastic culture and it didn't permit sculptural or pictorial representation of gods or prophets. So from about 700 up to another thousand years, up to around the 1700s, we have the birth of European archaeology. And that's when a lot of this was dug up and rediscovered. From the 1700s all the way up to 1900, this is when Howard Carter rediscovers the tomb of Tutankhamun and Europe and America go crazy for Egyptian sculpture and art. From 1900 just up to around 1920 we have the birth of modern European tourism here in Egypt and this is when the contemporary sculptural tradition starts. This is when Egyptian carvers rediscover Egyptian sculpture and turn again to carving it. This part of the West Bank is actually full of makers of reproductions and copies of ancient Egyptian sculpture, obviously for the tourist trade. And yet what we also have here is an enormous sculptural factory area along the Nile that's involved in making this stuff. Now, this is an interesting question, an interesting problem, because we obviously have a fantastic collection of original Egyptian sculpture in the Luxor Museum and in Karnak and Luxor Temple that anyone can look at. And then we have a range of craftsmen here busy figuring out that language and negotiating the original old language with a more contemporary taste, which admittedly, actually, it sometimes borders on kitsch. So there's a whole range here from fluorescent glass day glow, rather kitsch or pop reproductions, all the way down to reproductions that are so fine that there's actually a market here for what is said to be original pieces, but it's actually reproductions. So when did the sculpture industry really begin in Egypt? It begins in the 1920s basically, after the discovery of the famous uh, boy king Tutankhamun. Ah, uh, yeah, and that brought yes. the tourists. Yes, that yeah. brought a lot of tourists, and it makes the markets yeah. begin for us. Okay, yes. uh, so that was the time of your grandfather? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. And he was a carver? Yes, he yeah. was, yes. What kinds of uh, stone did he carve? Limestone. Mostly limestone? Mostly limestone, And yes. you took that just locally, did you? Yes, limestone was, um, as you are heading to Valley of the King, mm. it's uh, actually in the right hand side behind the, the high hills. There is a big massive valley there and there where they used to bring their limestone from. And at that time, how many families were carving? They weren't really many. They were only few mm -hmm. uh, families, maybe five, six families at that time. And when did the uh, business get bigger? It begins in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. Then the, they were after the um, uh, 1973. Mm -hmm. uh, the tourist market 
opens much more, yeah. then it begins to grow yeah. gradually, slowly, yeah. slowly. Yeah. Yes. And when did the sculpture industry hit its peak? 1998. 1998. Yes, 1998. Uh, it was a great time. A lot of tourists did come. 1995, upwards. Then it started until today. recently, when until today. Yes. When it's quite poor now. Yes, yeah. yes. Well, until the last five years. Yeah. But before, from 1995 till, say, uh, 2011, mm. a lot of tourists yeah. every day. How many families were carving in the industry at the peak? Thousands. Thousands. Yes. Yeah. Thousands of people. But today, not much. Yeah. People had to find other jobs because of there is not much tourist business at the moment. How much competition was there between the carvers? Who can do the best reproduction? Uh, the challenge was mainly begin the people who they work with the uh, basalt mm -hmm. stone and granite stone yeah. because they are very solid tough stone yeah. you have to be very skilled to be able to to finish a really good finish like uh, say like uh, almost similar to the fair one mm. now uh, in the Luxor museum and uh, also in the British Museum there's some very beautiful drawings giving a very precise system of proportions of Egyptian sculpture. Yes. It has to do with the width of the, the, the fist. The, yes. How much of that system of proportions do today's sculptors use and understand? Yeah. Sculptures here, they work by um, Passing knowledge, we don't really. They are not real. There is no school for to educate that kind of jobs. Okay. We have to teach, uh, if you like, each other. Yeah. How to do it? Father to son. Yes. Yeah, brother, brother to brother. brother. Yes. Yeah, okay. So some of the knowledge of the system of proportions then is is, is lost. It is. Yeah. Yes. If, uh, yes, it is at the moment, mm. and at the moment, uh, a lot of people aren't working like they used to. Why? Because the people aren't valuing the work as it should. Yeah. You know? Because carving takes a long a, time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can make a casting very quickly. Yeah, a casting is very easy. Yeah. Like easy. what they do in China, it's, uh, yeah. you know, it's all boxes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, all yeah. machine made. Machine made, yeah. yes. Here we don't tend to uh, rely on machines. Mm. Uh, because if the machine broke, you need parts for it. And it's difficult to find these kind of parts. Yeah. So people mainly do 90% of their work by hand. Mm. So th this is a beautiful piece in, in basalt. Uh, how long would it take for carving this? Uh, it could take between one to one and a half months mm. to finish it from A to Z. Yeah. Yes. And how much of it is done uh, with cutting on the saw? Or is it completely done by hand? Uh, to cut the piece first, yes, you will have to do the machines. Yeah. You have to use the machine for cutting the yeah. piece. And that's a diamond saw, is it? Yes, yeah. it is, yes. And then and when then you cut it, that's it. Then it goes to the carver. Yes. Yeah. yes. Who carved this? Uh, a friend of mine. Yeah. He lives locally here. Yeah. So it took him several months to do that? Yes, yes. Uh, at least two months. At least two months. At least, yeah. yes. <laughs> My name is Bilal. Uh, I am artist in Luxor here to work. Long time to work from Airborne. And uh, I, I love to work in granite stone and basalt stone. First time I work in uh, my life in uh, limestone and hammer stone. This is very, very soft stone to work in this. Here and this. This last one I work. And after no work again. Why did you stop? Because no, no tourists. There's no tourists. No tourists. There's no, no business. Uh, before the um, uh, revolution, mm -hmm. I work uh, good. Look, this is I make it and let it, let it finish. It's not finished yet. It's not finished yet. After the revolution, no finish. Look, no money. No money to get. Uh, uh, Metal, no money to work, uh, to bring uh, uh, hard, no money to bring food, 
start. I make my land now. I, I plant my land to make food for my child, what you see it, my child, and to make it this. Now, no, nothing. This is the last one I work in from four, five years I work it before the revolution. And after finish, stop. Finish work again. Before I love to work in granite, before I love to work with tourists to make some, he needed in his house. He bring for me photo, I need this same exactly, and I make it for him. And uh, he happy, I'm happy. He have uh, his, uh, something he needed to, to make his, his house and like it. Me, I happy by take money and happy to work. Because mm. uh, some people ask, getting to stone is very hard. I say, no hard. No harm. This is uh, getting to stone is very soft stone. When you need it, to talk to him, to talk to Gazar, to make life with him. It's very easy to work in this. Not very hard. Some people are very hard to say because he, he can't feel the stone. The stone he likes to feeling. Everything in the world he likes feeling. If you feel the stone, you easy work with it and make nice. But now, no work again with tourists, tourists down, not up. Traditional sculpture in Luxor has been convulsed by the revolution. Its economy was tied to the tourist trade and to its values of tradition and history. But here in Luxor, there's also an art school that fosters a new generation of contemporary sculptors with a remarkably wide range. Here, sculptors don't have to respond to the ancient Egyptian tradition unless they want to. They can respond to any tradition they like. There's an active 19th century European idea of sculpture here. Fine, figurative low relief. And here, a lion in clay. It seems watchful even on the prowl, another animal spirit brought into the pantheon. And here, a fine ostrich in steel, whose head is decidedly not in the sand. A lot of modernist and cubist-inspired work, such as this fine figure that would fit very nicely amongst Picasso's images of Don Quixote. But here is perhaps the nicest. It's mine. This is your piece. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's nice. Is it not like this? Oh. Oh. It's glass. No, it's glass. It's glass. They yeah. used the recycled. Yeah. Wow. Okay, yeah, I thought it was glass. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, this is. Recycled glass. Yeah, this is a glass bottle, and I put this in the oven and melt it. Yeah, like Jasper Johns with the ears and the mouths. Yeah. yeah, it's about uh, uh, the period after the revolution. Many people had silence; uh, was silent, didn't didn't talk. Many people killed, and many something uh, happened, and no one talked about this. We, we can see the, the mistakes and didn't talk. And hear about everything, the news, the bad news, and we didn't, uh, we didn't do anything. It's about uh, we see and hear and talk. Hello, welcome. 